Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm going to be playing Load Runner, which I think might be my first time ever playing this game. I, I just don't remember if I actually tried it on one of my live streams. I don't think so though. So I'm going to give it a shot. Um, so if, uh, if I remember it, that's good, but if I don't, hey, it'll be my first time playing. Anyways, the reason why I chose this game is because I've, I've played this a few times now on my channel. I've played the uh, the VIC-20, the Commodore VIC-20, and the Commodore 64 versions of this game. And both were done quite well. Um, I really enjoyed the game. In fact, you know, I was talking about, you know, while I was playing those games, how I remember this game uh, a long, long time ago when I was a kid, and I remember playing it on a very old computer at my grandparents' cottage. It wasn't actually at my cottage, it was a neighbor's, and they had the game, and I remember playing it and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, but I've just never had it on any system um, up until like really really later on that I actually have it on the uh, PlayStation um, which again I don't know if I've actually played it on the PlayStation either I don't I, I bought the game I remember buying it I just don't remember if I actually put it into my uh, PlayStation at the time but uh, regardless let's get around to playing this game and see how it plays because uh, I heard that this one's done quite well so let's pop the game up here all right, so we got that typical uh, Nintendo sound, Load Runner by Borderbound Software Inc. So we have an edit mode. I guess that's to make your own levels. That might be cool. I wonder if it works. I know there's a few Nintendo games that actually uh, have that edit mode. Um, what is it? Wrecking Crew, I believe. Wrecking Crew is the one I'm thinking about. Whoa, this looks so different. This looks very Nintendo, though. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, I don't think I've played this. <laughs> it doesn't look familiar at all. I was... I, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought it was actually going to look a lot like the uh, the Commodore 64 version and the, the Vic version. I wasn't expecting this. Okay, so... Um, you're picking up these little piles of something. Gold dust? Is that gold dust? <laughs> and you know the thing, I guess the thing that's different for me is the characters are actually like characters. You can make them out. Whereas in the uh, Commodore 64 and VIC-20 version, uh, they're just stick men. Um, but I always like that. I like the stick men. I always thought they looked funny. Uh, so this is giving it more of that Nintendo 8-bit feel, for sure. Ah, I just fooled them, and those look like little ninja guys. White and green, ugly-looking suits. So I can do that. I mean, the controls are very nice. That's cool, I like how he does that. Although on the other ones, um, he actually hangs there. Oh, man. It's not owned. But yeah, the other ones uh, that I played, it's not this little pile of uh, dirt or whatever dust, gold dust or whatever that is. I, I don't have the manual handy here. Um, they're just like squares. Oops. <laughs> I made that mistake a few times when I played it on the VIC-20. Well, it's got some pretty great music. I don't know why, but that music... That music's kind of reminding me of, like, Donkey Kong Jr. for some reason. Oh. Why does he always throw it that way? I was having the same problem on the VIC-20, where I was thinking I was going to drop it one way, and it dropped another way. But I like this. I like this version. This is neat. It's very long, too. Like, it, it doesn't fit in one screen. So you have to explore beyond the screens. Yeah, see? How do you... Does he only shoot that way? Can I not... Do I have to use the other button? Hmm. I haven't really been exploring the uh, other buttons to see if that does anything. Ah, yes. Okay. I'm smart. <laughs> so you got the two buttons. One digs to the left, one digs to the right. 
makes total sense now. See, again, I was used to playing this on, on Commodore 64 and VIC-20, which only has one fire button, so... I wasn't thinking about the fact that they would utilize the other button. I don't know, I kind of like... I like the other way. I like the original way where they, they kind of hang. They kind of look like they're hanging from the rope, not just uh, climbing like that. Oh, they're okay. We've got a nice little interlude screen here. What's he doing? Looks like he was calling out to his buddies or something. Maybe he was making fun of everyone. Yeah, I like how it kind of scrolls around and shows you the, uh, uh-oh. Shows you the whole level before you begin. Just to, just to kind of give you a little glance of what you're getting into. See, that music, it, it, it's, it's got Donkey Kong sound to it. Actually, a lot of this, uh, even the way he's running and stuff, it's got a lot of Donkey Kong feel to it. You fall down. Oh, he caught me before I could... Dang! It's got a nice challenge to it. The sound of going up the ladders is kind of funny. It's like a tinkle tinkle sound. Let me make sure my phone here. Whoa! It fell through the wall or the floor. There you go. Oh! Let's see if I can trap them both. Oh no! Oh no! That was close. So I guess you can't... Yeah, you can't drop the uh, little stuff there to make a hole. Ah, uh, I remember this in, in the, uh... Big one, too, where you had to go through... two floor pieces. Run, little dude! Oh no! Oh, I, I, darn it! <laughs> Thought I had it there. I guess I'm dead. Darn! Couldn't get out. I, I guess this way is probably the better way. You want to probably start at one end and. Work your way over to the other end. Okay, let's let's trap this guy. He can he can go down there and wait there for a while. Oh. Oops. I think how they they literally just like drop into the hole. Like did not see that hole. Hurry up, little man. Okay. Fast. There's the victory music. I'm gonna run really fast. Oh no! Oh! I almost landed right on my head. 800 points. He's doing this little. Dang, I don't know what he's doing there with his arm there. Looked like he uh, was waving away something. I was hoping that the color scheme would kind of change, but it's not changing. Looks like it's always going to be that color. I was thinking, you know, you know, some some levels might be like blue or green or something, or just add a little bit of change to it. But I guess not. Oh, how do I? Oh. Like I said in the other uh, other games that I played, the the Commodore and Vic versions, the game is kind of like a puzzle. Sometimes you feel like you have to know which direction you want to go. Okay, 
that guy just keeps dropping. Oops. Ah, I got it. Oh. Smart. Uh oh, am I gonna get trapped? No? Okay. They do follow you the same way, too. Like, they're pretty clever in the way they follow you. The level design is pretty much the same. It's, it just seems like it, anyways. But it's it's longer. <laughs> oh. And of course, you know, with games like this, you just gotta get used to the idea that you can't jump. Oops. Ah! Just like in Wrecking Crew, it's those games where you feel like you should be able to jump, but you can't. I think making the making the guy jump would make this game a little bit too easy, maybe. So you'd just be able to jump over those guys. Another game is uh, Bugs Bunny Crazy Castles. That's very similar to this. In that you can't jump and you just kind of have to... Just outwit the opponents. Use your various weapons. Uh-oh. Alright. Get over there. Oh, I get it. Oh, no! I don't know how I was supposed to do that. Jeez. Yeah, much like the other ones, you, you pretty much always have to start... You always have to start off at the very beginning, and uh, everything you caught, it just goes right back to the start. So you can't, like, get them all but one and then die, and then just have to get one. You have to get them all again. Oh. Why did... <laughs> That's gonna... Oh. Alright, let's check out this uh, edit mode. Pretty cool. Although you have to keep selecting, it doesn't stay on the piece that you just recently picked up or used, I mean. But that's cool. I wonder how you play it, though. <laughs> oh, great! I started myself off stuck. Alright. That's just a pause button. Okay. Wonder if I can change him. There we are. Okay, so that's just Oh. Doesn't wanna That's kinda neat though. But where how do you put enemies and stuff? That we got that. What's that thing? Oh, that's the line. Okay. So we got that. Oops. It's confusing because you keep thinking that you're gonna keep using the same one. Let's change this to a ladder. Yeah, because you have to go through the whole selection just to get back to. <laughs> Neat, 
though. I, I, would, I would think that you'd have a lot of fun doing this. Can you put other enemies? Oops. It's actually pretty decent. I like when, when, when games have these little level builders. It's always fun and, you know, it's kind of like the whole uh, Super Mario Maker uh, where you get to build the Mario worlds and stuff. So, only this, I, I'm sure once you turn off your Nintendo, it's probably done. But I think um, some of the Nintendos were, were built, or these games were built with the Famicom uh, disk drive thing where you probably could save them. Uh, at least that's what I believe with Wrecking Crew, Any anyways. So yeah, this is Load Runner. This is kind of fun. I really enjoyed this one on the Nintendo. Um, I'll probably see if I can check out other versions of the game. I know there's tons of them. There's, there's, it, the game was ported all over the place, but this one has actually been quite decent. It's, it's really gives you that Nintendo feel, that 8-bit Nintendo feel, and I like how it has this little level builder. That's really cool. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Leave some comments down below. Always like to hear what you have to say. What's your favorite version of Load Runner? Have you played this game? Have you played any of them? Uh, always like to hear what you have to say. Hope you subscribe. Talk to you later.